socialism is not a universally agreed upon idea. In other words, when anyone says socialism hasn't worked, my first reaction, I try to I try to stay calm and cool and collected. But my first reaction is, whoa, are you perhaps not aware that from the beginning, socialists have not agreed on what the word means? They never did. They don't now. What one country means by socialism is not identical to what another one does. And once you understand that, posing the question, socialism in the singular is a failure, becomes nonsensical. What do you mean? Which one? Let me, is this worth exploring? Sure, sure, please. All right. Here's one example. Many countries in Scandinavia and Western Europe, and I'm thinking here of Sweden, Denmark, France, Germany, Italy, will be referred to either as socialist economies by some, or as social democracies, a kind of variation on that, or as democratic socialisms. I mean, large numbers of people use those descriptors all the time. And here's what they mean. Most industries in those societies that I mentioned, those countries, remain privately owned and operated. On the other hand, in those societies, the government has intervened to control, to regulate, to tax, in 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 a pretty intrusive way, on what those private enterprises can do. And the reference to them as socialist is a reference to the amount, intensity, and intrusiveness of the government controls and regulations upon what remain private capitalist enterprises. And that is called often Scandinavian socialism, social democracy, and so on. When Bernie Sanders, who self-identifies as a socialist, gives examples, he prefers to use Denmark over and over again, publicly. So that's one idea of socialism. Now we go to the Soviet Union, quite different in a crucial aspect. They not only have the government control, regulate, and tax, the way they do in Denmark, but they go another step. The government takes over the enterprises. The government owns and operates the enterprise, not private capitalists. And they call that socialism in the Soviet Union. USSR stands for Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. Then we have China, which is a hybrid. China has 40% publicly owned and operated enterprises, 60% private capitalist owned and operated enterprise, and a powerful government regulating both of them. They all call, China refers to itself as socialism with Chinese characteristics. Okay, which one are you talking about? And then there's a fourth one, which is rising fast in the world today, which is a bit of a criticism of the first three, because it argues that those discussions of socialism may, note the word, may be necessary, but they are certainly not sufficient. Socialism to be socialism in this fourth perspective has to have a transformation of the workplace the factory, the office, the store, from a top-down, hierarchical, unequal relationship between employer and employee to a horizontal, democratic organization of the enterprise, something that would look like what we in this country 
like to call worker co-op. Okay, which which socialism, pray tell, pray tell, are you criticizing? Your hostility to socialism is so total and so ignorant that you just lump all of this together and declare it a failure. You know, that's childish. It it's reeks of the ignorance you either have, because you don't know what I just said, or you really don't care, which does you no compliment either. It's extraordinary. And you know, in another society, or on other topics, the people involved in these discussions would not behave this way. If I breezily said, in the course of such a conversation, how boring Shakespeare is, there'd be someone in the room, I hope, who would explain to me, I mean, Shakespeare wrote a lot of stuff. Really? All of it? You don't... And then would tell me about it. And I'd get embarrassed because I had really spoken stupidly. So we don't allow people in certain areas to talk. But the absence of a culture of studying Marxism and talking about it has allowed our intellectual community to babble junk as if they were serious in a way that, frankly, I find embarrassing. I often don't say anything because, you know, this is, this is having an in-depth conversation with a, a brick of cement. You know, after a while, it gets boring. I don't, I, by the way, I don't mean to be aggressive, but part of this conversation should be not just the words I say, but the tone and the style and the intonation and the facial expressions, because they convey a lot of meaning also. <laughs>